Hello everybody, I am Kaiju Cooper and today we are going to be taking a look at Transformers Kingdom Autobot Slammer. I got this guy discounted at Ross for like 10 bucks, pretty good for a deluxe class figure. And uh, yeah, you, we're just going to go ahead and look at the box first. Here we get Transformers Kingdom, nice uh, slanted box here, great looking artwork of Slammer there. There's the top of the box, there's, these, uh, there's the Ross price tag there. Go to the side, we got the Transformers Kingdom uh, box art. Back, get some nice product shots. This guy is a weaponizer, which means he can split up and do a bunch of different pieces and become armor for other figures. There's the bottom of the box. Nice, and that is pretty much it for the packaging. And now we are going to take a look at the figure itself. Here is Slammer himself looking pretty nice. Great white uh, coloring and this grayish plastic, brown, tannish plastic. And I really do like that not that much of the figure is painted, meaning that paint shipping won't be happening here and you'll be able to play with him a lot longer and you won't have to worry about, you know, paint coming off this guy. So, very happy about that, although I will say right out the box, there's some problems with this arm in particular. First of all, connection here is pretty weak. Probably gonna have to thicken that up with some super glue. And, <clears throat> wow, my voice cracked really badly just now. Holy. And they forgot to put a pin in his elbow. Yeah. And he, he's got some really weird feet, so he likes falling over a lot. Wow, this review's already been a mess. Come on, Slammer, keep it together, man. So yeah, there's that. I'm gonna try and fix this later. I think I'm just gonna have to deal with the elbow, but this arm connection, definitely gonna thicken that peg up. And one of my biggest complaints so far is the hands. They look really weird. And it's got this like, protruding peg. Uh, that is so you can connect this gun onto there. And you know, it does come in later with the transformation and stuff like that, so yeah. But he does have this really nice cannon here. Looks really nice. You could probably put a siege blast effect in there, but I don't have any. The figure can balance pretty okay, but you know, his feet, he doesn't really have feet, which might be part of it. The back is a bit messy. He's got a really weird backpack that limits articulation, but that is because you can actually, we'll just take the whole backpack off and make things easier. Come on. Very tight connection with uh, most of the rest of this set here. And as you can see, he's got a real gappy back when that backpack isn't on. Although I guess he does look pretty clean. Anyway, you want to take this backpack here. You want to take each of these off and take this top part off if it wants to come off. Come on. There we go. Then you want to take this and just plug it back on the back. This will keep everything filled in and it'll look a lot nicer, still pretty clean. And then what you can do, first thing, you wanna remove this. And here is pretty much the base robot without any of his weapons. We'll, we'll get to these in depth in a little bit. And once again, he looks really nice and we're gonna go over articulation since he can't really be inhibited like this. Get a nice ball joint at the head. He can look up about that much, down not too much. Also, lots of nice silver paint. You get Swivel at the arm there, I can move out about this much. I think I'm gonna use his arm. Uh, you get a bicep swivel, also the arm can bend right there. You get a waist swivel, sorry. Uh, sadly, no hand swivels, so that stinks. Although you do get an ab crunch, which is surprising considering almost no mainline figures have an ab crunch, so that was nice. Oh, there goes his arm. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it off. He can kick about that far. Goes out about that much, you get a thigh swivel. Very, very nice knee bend there because of the transformation. And a great ankle tilt. So that is all for the articulation there. You can get some cool poses with this guy. But now on to the weapons. You get these treads. Yeah, they are treads and they they can connect. And be a chainsaw. We'll, we'll get to the full chainsaw in a second, but... As of now, you can have him hold each of these individually, which doesn't look too bad. I guess they can be 
smaller handheld chainsaws or just like bashing clubs, I guess. Beat some Decepticon heads in, so pretty cool looking right there. Get them all posed up with this. And yet, yeah, that doesn't look half bad with these uh, with these clubs here. I guess swords, whatever you want to call them, you do you. It's a weaponizer. You can do a lot of stuff with this guy. And take those off. You get this tank barrel. Now, it is shown that you're just supposed to plug it into here and use it like so. And that doesn't look too bad. I recommend you using it like that because, you know, it looks the best. Although if you wanted to, you can take this piece, and I guess it turns into a bit of an adapter. You want to take that piece and you want to plug the barrel into there, and he can just hold it like a normal gun. And that doesn't look half bad either, having him hold it like a normal rifle. Although I do prefer having it plug onto there. And now, go into his full weapon mode, you want to plug the cannon barrel onto one side, if it'll go on, and you want to take this adapter piece, come on man, stand up, take this adapter, keep it right there, and take these two cha uh, chainsaws, plug them together, it'll plug right into there, and now you can plug that into his other arm, and he's got a nice arm chainsaw, although this arm does not do a good job of holding it up. There you go. You get his big arm chainsaw. Looks really, really cool. That silver paint really helps uh, helps out a lot. And take that off. You can plug both of them onto one arm. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't look half bad. It does look a little bit weird though. And if you are absolutely insane, you can put the gun barrel onto the chainsaw and have a giant weapon thing here that doesn't make any sense at all. And uh, you can have him hold it, or probably should plug it into the arm, but I wanna see what it looks like holding it. Oh boy. He, that looks weird. Okay, yeah. Keep that plugged into there, and giant cannon thing doesn't look that good. Wow, that is way too much. So, oh. So yeah, that is, oh wow, come on. That is pretty much it for Slammer and his weapons. I think I'm gonna connect everything back to the backpack. It'll make things easier for the transformation. And usually I don't go over transformations on camera that much anymore. Either I'll animate them or just skip it entirely. So, but be, because of this guy's transformation, I really wanna show it off on camera, so I will. Uh, first thing you wanna do is you wanna Unplug both of his arms. Unplug the bottom there. Actually, not the whole bottom, just each of the legs. Like so. Take his whole backpack off. I'm gonna flip the head into there and bring this up like so. You're gonna leave that off the side. You wanna take these arms and take this part here and do this, actually, sorry, uh, my bad. What you want to do is you want to take these two arms and plug them together. You want to make sure that they're facing the right way. Plug them together. And there you go. Then you want to take the adapter piece and put it on the end there. And take the tank barrel, plug it onto there, and that will be your turret. Then I'm going to take this little tank tread piece and plug that onto there. Then you want to take each of these pieces, flip that out, fold this in on both of them. Then you want to take this here and you can see these little ports. Just kind of get it. There you go. Um, honestly, it might be easier if you keep these untabbed first. But the instructions say to do this part second. 
and I'm starting to see why this <laughs> do that part second. Uh, wow. Okay, give me a sec. Struggle with your blood, sweat, and tears to kind of make it look okay because I don't remember it connecting like this when I had the instructions in front of me. It looked better. I don't know, man. I actually did this part wrong. Sorry. Get back to this part and make sure it's swiveled around there. Done. Bada boom, bada bang. Connect these two pieces at the front there. Flip this in, and there you have the tank mode. And despite what it takes to get here, not gonna lie, it looks great. Looks really, really good. Uh, nice, compact look to the whole figure here. Although I will say the crotch sticking out a little bit at the bottom is, you know, um, don't know if this goes in anymore. There we go. Yeah, but even though it is a bit fiddly to get it together, it is a very, very, very great looking tank mode. All of it comes together really nicely. It's convincing. There's literally no kibble anywhere, not even on the bottom. Uh, it is an amazing looking tank mode. It turned out really good. And due to the nature of the transformation and the way the arms plug together, you don't really get much side to side with this cannon or else it will start coming unplugged. So, that's a bit disappointing. Although you do get plenty of, oh, the elbow came unplugged. Oh, my goodness. There we go. You do get lots of up and down movement. Great looking tank. The treads, everything, the way it all fits together. You even get some wheels here, although they're only on the front for some reason, but Amazing looking tank, very compact, great colors, silver paint works out really well. And here he is next to Godzilla, because, you know, nothing like a tank versus Godzilla, am I right? Boom! Oh, survived, okay. Uh, yeah, pretty good looking tank mode. You can have your little mini figures right on top of them, I guess. Here's a little star scream I got from Dollar Tree. Yeah, great looking tank mode. Interesting transformation, but overall, I'd say it's a pretty good figure. I recommend getting it. Mine has some quality control issues, uh, but that's not going to make me detract from what the figure was supposed to be. So definitely pick this guy up if you can. Uh, I recommend trying to get him at mm, at least $20. I got mine for $10. I was, got real lucky with this guy finding him at Ross. So definitely try and pick this guy up if you can. I love this figure. Great figure. Uh, I recommend it. So... Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.